All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are doing a, a DIY project here at the house. We are gonna be installing a generator uh, inlet box and an interlock kit, a circuit breaker interlock kit. So what is that? What does that mean? What is this gonna do for you? So if you are looking to hook up your generator, uh, a portable generator, uh, you know, whatever wattage you have, 10,000 watt and below probably, uh, some type of portable generator to your house and be able to you know, power kind of any circuit in your house, uh, this is what you want to do. There's two main ways to do this. Uh, one of them I've done a video on, which I will link up in the I, uh, card system there, that is installing a generator transfer switch. A generator transfer switch is limited. It is a, a safe and, and effective way to hook up a portable generator to your house, but it is limited to the number of circuits that you can power. So generally you have to pick 8, 10, maybe 12 uh, specific circuits in your panel that you want to power. So maybe your well and your kitchen circuits for your refrigerator and you know some lighting and some other things like that. But you can't really, you don't have full range control over any circuit in your panel. Um, for bigger houses, this definitely can be an issue because you may want to power more things or you may want to have, have control over what you want to power at what time. So today we're going to be using the other method, which is using a generator or panel interlock kit and a generator inlet box on the outside of the house. And I'll go through the whole install on this. It's not too difficult. There's uh, one thing that you're gonna need uh, set up previous to this part of the install, and that is some kind of a some kind of wire from your panel to the outside. Um, in our case, we're using a, a, a wire that was existing here at the house, uh, but you can hook up your own breaker in your panel and then just run a wire to a hole, drill a hole you know, out of your basement or something like that, and then you can hook this up. So that'd be something that I'm not gonna go through in this video. So how this works is on the outside of the house. Uh, here we have some wires coming out that is wired to the panel. We're gonna put the generator inlet box on the outside of the house. This will get wired, it's a waterproof box. Uh, a cable goes from this box here and then plugs in directly to the generator. It has a twist lock uh, you know, plug on it and that's gonna handle a 30 amp. This is a 30 amp uh, system here. And then on the inside of the house on the electrical panel, you're gonna need what's called a generator interlock kit. I'm gonna go through why you need this, why it's important and why this is this is a safety thing, this is code, you can't do this without it. Before we get into this, I have just several quick disclaimers, all right? Number one, you do not want to backfeed your generator through a dryer outlet in your house or an air conditioning line or something like that. That is something that you do not want to do. A lot of people are out there looking to do that because you've, you've waited too long and now you're in a power outage situation and you wanna find a quick way to feed power back into your panel. That is not the safe way to do it. You can absolutely cause your generator can catch on fire when the power comes back on. If you don't do things properly, uh, you have other issues with causing damage to things in the house, causing damage or hurt people that are out working on the lines, linemen, things like that. So you do not wanna do this through back feeding through a circuit without the proper equipment. And also I am not a electrician. I This is a, a DIY approach to this uh, from a homeowner's perspective. It's something that, that most people can do uh, with general knowledge of electricity. And so I'm gonna go through just the, the basic and quick of this. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with it though, I would recommend getting an electrician to do it. They can pop this in for you probably at a minimal cost. So, so let's get started. We're gonna start first with the outdoor generator inlet box. We're gonna mount this to a brick wall here on the outside of the house. And then we'll go inside and hook up the generator interlock kit next. I'm gonna start by drilling a hole in the back of the box so we can feed our wires through. I'm using a paddle bit for this, which isn't ideal, but we're gonna run it in reverse once we get down to the paddle so we don't crack the plastic. All right, so now we're gonna just mount this box to the wall. We've got, there's six actually mounting holes in here. We're only gonna use four of them as long as we get good holes. So because we're drilling into brick here, we are using an actual hammer drill. Uh, this is a, a new tool that I just got because we have a ton of brick on this house. So a hammer drill uses a twisting and a hammering motion in order to drill through masonry stuff, bricks, concrete, center blocks, all that kind of stuff. So this one can actually be used in just a drill mode or it actually has the hammer drill mode as well. We've got the correct size masonry bit in here for these Tapcon screws. These are great for uh, masonry stuff. They, you just, you don't need any kind of anchor or anything like that. You just drill the correct size hole and these, they have a really coarse thread on them and so they'll thread right into the, the cement. Uh, these work really well. So this also has a depth gauge on here. I don't wanna go too deep, but I do want them to be, you, you wanna make sure that these don't bottom out in the hole because it'll actually strip your hole out if they bottom out. So 
we want to make sure that we at least go this deep. We'll adjust our depth gauge here just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and drill our holes to that depth. The way that this works, the uh, it's best to try to cut these off the same length and then push the extra wire back into your hole. So I'm actually going to restrip all of these and just cut them, cut them back to the length of this black one here. So the wiring's pretty straightforward on this. Um, the actual plug itself has screws on each side. There's just four terminals here. It's 220 volts. So there's a ground terminal on one side and then the two uh, sides uh, opposing that are for your hots. So it's your, uh, the, in this case, it's wired as red and black, but a lot of times they're yellow and green and then white or your common is gonna go here. So uh, they're pretty simple. Just stick the wires in and make sure that they're clamped down. So I've got them all opened up right now. I'll put the wires in and tighten them up. So that's that. It's all uh, nice and safe and secure. And I like the, I like this particular inlet box because you have the clear panel on the front uh, so you can see exactly what it is if you're just walking by. But this has a, kind of an extra safety feature. These screw in so that just in case the breaker was somehow left on inside, which we're gonna talk about that in a minute, no one could stick in here, you know, stick their hand in there or whatever, you'd know, you know that this was uh, meant to be closed. So it's got these little twist locks on each side and you can actually, uh, lock this. You can run a zip tie through here or one of those little cable locks or something like that to actually uh, lock this little uh, door shut so that no one could get in there. Kids can't get in there or something like that. But So now that we have this done, nice and secure, level, and uh, screwed onto the outside all wired up, we're going to go inside and install the interlock kit for the breaker. Okay, for in here on the panel, uh, we need to install a breaker or generator or panel interlock kit. They're called lots of different things. Uh, in order to do that, every panel is a little different. And so what you're gonna need to do is go actually go to uh, geninterlock.com. That was the website that I found this stuff on and they were pretty good. They had pretty much every different kind of interlock kit that you could get. I have a cutler hammer uh, style panel and you know you might have a Siemens style panel you might have a square D panel uh, whatever it is uh, you can put type in your uh, brand and then it'll ask you to take a measurement from the main to your first breaker either on the left or the right and then it, it'll tell you the interlock kit you need you can buy it this comes with absolutely everything you need to install it and it's it's great we're gonna flip the main power off we're gonna be running on some LED work lights and we will uh, take the panel face off and then we're going to actually drill some holes in here and install a bracket. Okay so before we take the panel cover off it comes with this uh, template that we are going to put in place and mark our holes. I'm going to set it in up next to the main breaker and then just right down against the um, generator breaker and mark those hole locations. So one of the first things I'm actually doing here, there was a 50 amp breaker in there and that generator inlet box is only rated at 30 amps as well as my generator. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop a 30 amp breaker in here just so everything matches. And breakers are pretty easy to install. Um, there's a lip in here that it kind of hooks on. There's little hooks on the back side of it. You wire in your two wires, black and red, and it just kind of fits in there and then snaps into place. And so I'm not gonna go through that process in too much detail doesn't matter which terminal the black and red wire goes into. So part of this also, it comes with these zip ties. It, they want you to connect the top two breakers together. And so there's a, a double zip tie here that we're, we're using to do that. And this will make sense in just a few minutes. <laughs> So these zip ties actually have a, uh, a release on them, which most zip ties do not. So if we didn't remove this breaker, we can actually release the tension on the zip tie and pull it out. But 
Um, this is to hold these two breakers together so that you can't force this breaker over and it'll pull the breaker out. Uh, when, when we have our bracket in here, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, but this just holds everything together. Um, it's kind of an extra safety thing it looks like. So a couple things that help me out a lot when I'm doing electrical work when I have to have the power off is this little uh, Blue Eddy or Max Oak uh, power inverter. It's a battery inverter basically. And I have two of my LED lights running off of this. One of them is this Stanley LED light, this work light. This comes on a tripod, so this is a little taller. And then I'm also using this smaller work light, which is just a bunch of LED panels on swivels, which is pretty handy as well. So, so the kit comes with the, the drill bit and screws that you need to, uh, to, to get everything installed. Um, it also comes with the bracket itself and a mounting template. This is just a template. This is all milled aluminum. It looks like, uh, and this is just a, a template just so you get your holes marked out just in the right place. And then the bracket here will, will slide uh, on those, those screw holes. Comes with a couple of little uh, stickers to put inside the panel just to uh, show you what you have. And then it also comes with thread locker, thread locker for the uh, little screws that we're gonna put in. So. All right, so let's just go over what we have installed here. Basically what this is, is a safety bracket. It just forces you to, if you're gonna have the generator turned on, it forces you to have the main breaker off. So when the main breaker is in this down position, it's off right now, the bracket can slide over, which then allows this breaker to turn on. So now I can't turn the main breaker on because the bracket prevents it. And what this prevents is back feeding. So if for both the safety of your generator and the safety of the people working out on the lines, you know, outside your house, uh, if you're powering, you know, you have power coming in through this breaker here, when it's on, it's energized now the rest of this panel and it energizes all, all of the breakers in this panel. Now everything is on, but that also means that if you turn on your main breaker here, if you were to flip this on, it would backfeed power through this breaker and then out into the lines, out you know into the neighborhood, which is what we don't want to do. It also prevents if you did have this main breaker on, let's say, and you had your generator powering in through here, so you were sending power out to the lines. When the when the power comes back on, basically it would feed all that power back in through and back out to your generator, which will could start your generator on fire. It could cause all kinds of problems. So we don't want that to happen either. And so this prevents that. So this is a safe way of backfeeding your generator power through the breaker and energizing all the breakers on your panel. Now, how you'd want to use this is, and it actually gives you instructions, but you'd want to shut off all your breakers and uh, start your generator up, let it warm up, and then flip on the generator breaker, which is this one right here. So that is ener energizing the entire panel. And then you just want to flip on the circuits that you want to use. So just a few of them. You don't want to power, you know, all of these 40s and 30s and 20s, you know, double, well, this is the well. Um, but all these 30s and 40s, all, these are all for welders and AC units and the 50 down here for our stove. Like all that stuff's going to get turned off. You're not going to power that kind of stuff with the generator. Uh, but all these 15s and 20s for various things, we have it all labeled in here. So you can turn on your refrigerator and garage outlets and, you know, garage door opener and, uh, you know, your furnace and all kinds of different things. So you can power whatever circuits your generator can handle. It just gives you a lot more versatility when you're using a portable generator to power your home. So then when you're done, you want to turn the generator power off. Now that allows this bracket to slide over and out of the way. It's a little bit tight. Now it allows me to turn my main on. And now we have power back to the house. And so you can see the bracket will not slide over. So it won't let me slide this over. So I can't turn this on now. So that's uh, safety as well on this side of it. Um, when, the, when the main panel is on, 
it's not going to feed power out to that outlet that we put on the outside of the house so this is safe as well on the outside so everything that you saw in the video here today will be linked in the description as i said and i'll also probably put a comment with all that so where you can get the generator interlock kit um, the generator inlet box which was over on amazon as well as all the tools and things that we use including that uh, greenworks uh, hammer drill which is pretty nice it's a new addition for for me and uh, and a few other things that LED lights and other stuff that you saw here so links to all that stuff if you're interested in any of those things and if you have questions or comments if you've done a lot of these before if you have any words of advice or anything like that i'd love to hear from you throw that stuff down below uh, and questions as well. I try to answer questions. Uh, even if this video is 10 years old, I'll try to get to your questions. So don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Of course, subscribe if this is your first time here and follow along with the SSL Family Dad channel. We'd love to have you tag along. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.